Hello, my name is Rodolfo. I'm a 66 year old man, and I'm going to tell a very sad story that happened in my life. Since childhood, I've always had an irrational fear of werewolves. I remember the stories my grandfather used to tell about creatures that roamed the forest during full moon nights, searching for their prey. Although these stories terrified me, I never truly believed in them. After all, werewolves were just monsters from tales used to scare children, or so I thought. The years went by and I grew up. I became a strong and confident man. I bought a small farm near my parents' estate, where I got married and lived peacefully with my family. I had a loving wife and children who filled me with pride. However, that childhood fear of werewolves never fully left me. It was like a shadow silently following me. But I always ignored it, convinced that monsters didn't exist. One night at my farm, the full moon illuminated the field around me. I was on the porch admiring the beautiful sky when something strange happened. A terrifying, deep, and prolonged howl came from the forest surrounding my property. The sound was intense, and for a moment I hesitated. My heart raced and the memories of that old fear resurfaced. It can't be. What could it be, I thought. The howl came again, this time closer. I stood up and rushed inside, grabbing my shotgun and a flashlight. My oldest son, Lucas, wasn't home. He often went out on full moon nights, saying he enjoyed walking through the woods, something that always worried me, but I never forbade him. With the flashlight in one hand and the shotgun in the other, I entered the dark forest. I didn't know exactly what I was looking for, but I needed to find the source of that terrible howl. The deeper I went, the heavier the air seemed to become. The usual sounds of the forest had stopped, leaving only the sound of my footsteps and breathing. Suddenly I saw something move. It was a creature standing upright like a man covered in black fur. The creature had already noticed me, and its wide eyes were locked on me. It was enormous. I raised the shotgun and aimed at the monster. The creature advanced, making horrifying noises. I pulled the trigger and fired, thinking it would be enough but the monster seemed almost bulletproof. It got even closer, and before I could shoot again, it leapt at me. I felt the creature's claws about to tear into my skin, but at the moment it was going to strike the fatal blow, it suddenly released me and ran off into the forest, howling. That night, Lucas didn't return. We never saw him again, and I still wonder if Lucas was that creature or if he was taken by it. The authorities were never able to find my son, Whatever the truth may be, it was a terrible fate. And if he really is that beast, I believe the curse I feared so much has come true. Along with the extreme fear I've had of werewolves since childhood. Good night. At the time of this event, my grandmother and grandfather lived in Renopolis in the countryside of Sao Paulo, on a farm in a neighborhood called Cascada. Today, that neighborhood still exists, but the farm no longer does, nor the coffee plantation. Now, it's just like a regular part of a town, but back then, it was a rural area. My grandmother always says that she and my grandfather found work on that coffee plantation shortly after arriving in town. The owner of the farm was hiring people because it was coffee harvest season, and to make things easier, the workers had to live in a house on the property. The work started very early, at 5.30 a.m., and lasted until around 5 p.m. The boss always warned the workers not to stay in the coffee fields after dark because they suspected there was some dangerous animal around. Several animals had been found dead in the coffee plantation. Dogs, chickens, and even horses. They were told to leave by 5 p.m. and not return until the next day. One day my grandfather and the boss went to a neighboring farm to round up some cattle as two farmhands were too sick to work. 
Since the neighbor was a good friend of my grandfather's boss, he asked for help to gather the cattle and close the pen. It took a long time to round up the herd, and night fell quickly. My grandfather and the boss were chatting, and around 12.30 a.m., they decided it was time to head home. The farm owner lent them two flashlights, and they started making their way back. The path was pitch black, and only the flashlights lit their way. Then, the boss had the idea to take a shortcut through the coffee fields. My grandfather advised against it, reminding him that he had warned the workers not to stay there after dark. However, the boss said he was armed and, with the lanterns, believed they wouldn't have any problems, even if a dangerous animal appeared. At a certain point, as they were crossing the plantation, my grandfather and the boss began to smell something strong, like a dead animal. They decided to look around to see where the stench was coming from. They looked to the sides but saw nothing. Suddenly, my grandfather spotted a large shape on the ground nearby. When they shone the light on it, they realized it was a dead horse. As they approached to take a closer look, they heard something big running between the coffee plants, and the smell grew even stronger. My grandfather then grabbed the boss and told him they needed to leave immediately. They heard footsteps a little further away, followed by growls. My grandfather pointed the flashlight and saw an animal that, at first they thought was one of the neighbor's dogs, as he owned a large breed. But the animal came toward them and suddenly it stood up on two legs walking like a human, growling with its teeth bared. The creature was in an attack stance. My grandfather and the boss started running, and it chased after them. In their panic, it was only after they started running that the boss remembered he was armed. He pulled a .38 revolver from his waist, aimed at the animal, and fired a few shots. A roar of pain echoed through the area. To my grandfather and the boss's surprise, the animal pressed one of its paws against the wound and glared at them, this time with much more fury. With trembling hands, the boss took two steps back and fired again at the creature. It bolted into the coffee fields, roaring in pain, and disappeared into the darkness. When they reached the farm, my grandmother greeted them. They told her what had happened, and from then on, the warning not to stay in the coffee plantation after dark was even more serious, for they now knew exactly what had been killing those animals. Good night. Hello, my name is Bruno, and I'm going to tell you about an experience I had about seven years ago. I used to enjoy hunting in a forest near my town, in the interior of Minas Gerais. As usual, I grabbed my rifle, got into my truck, and drove to the entrance of that forest. Once I arrived, I got out of the car and ventured into the woods. I walked for quite a while, searching for something good to hunt. After some time, I came across a small shack in a clearing. It seemed strange to see that shack in the middle of nowhere. I had hunted in that forest before, and although I can't say I had ever been to that exact spot, I had never seen a shack there. I approached to take a closer look. The shack seemed to have only one room, with a door in the front and a window on each side. The windows were painted black, as if whoever had built it didn't want anyone from outside to see what was inside. I started to think it wasn't a good idea to stay near that place. The owner could show up at any moment and probably wouldn't be happy to see me there. Everything felt very eerie, so I turned to leave. As soon as I re-entered the woods, I began to hear the sound of someone or some animal stepping on the leaves. Whatever it was, it was approaching the shack quickly. With all my hunting experience, I hid in a nearby bush and stayed silent. In the silence, I could hear more clearly the sounds of something moving through the brush until it finally emerged from the forest and entered the clearing where the shack was. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was a huge beast, about two meters tall, walking on two legs, and that wasn't all. The thing entered the shack without breaking the door, 
It managed to unlock it and enter as if it were the owner of the place. I stayed there for a while without moving, until I finally managed to slowly back away. Once I had gained some distance, I started to run and made it back to my truck. I never went into that forest again, nor did I go near that shack. A few years later, I moved out of town, and to this day, I still wonder what that thing was. Could it really have been a werewolf? Was it that beast that built the shack? Whatever it was, it's something I will never want to find out. Good night. A young couple who dreamed of living a peaceful life in the countryside had the great opportunity to fulfill their desire. By a twist of fate, they found a farm for sale at a price far below market value. It was fertile land with a comfortable house and a source of crystal clear water, perfect for starting a new life. It was an irresistible offer, but also very suspicious. The young couple didn't think twice and bought the farm without even visiting it. The husband was so happy that he told his wife he would go see the place and come back to get her. He took his horse and set off on a journey that would take about two days. He carried with him his father's old sword, which he wasn't sure would work, but at least it could scare away wild animals with the noise it made. He approached the farm in the late afternoon, with the full moon shining in the sky. On the way, he was puzzled by the number of dead animals he found but he thought it might be the work of wild boars or jaguars and didn't worry too much. He was eager to see his new home and meet the farm's caretaker, to whom he was supposed to show the purchase documents. But something terrible happened. A huge black and furry wolf jumped on the horse and the man trying to bite them. The horse panicked and bolted, leaving the man behind. He had no choice but to climb the first tree he could find. He spent the entire night there trembling with fear while the enormous wolf tried to reach him. The wolf growled and howled but couldn't climb the tree. He remembered the sword and tried to strike the wolf but only managed to create a loud bang and a spark that burned the wolf's snout. This made the wolf even angrier and it continued trying to climb the tree. When the sun was about to rise, the wolf finally lost interest in the man. Or maybe it couldn't stay there any longer, and it disappeared into the woods as if by magic. The man waited a few more hours to be sure the wolf was gone. Then he climbed down from the tree and decided to walk to the farm. He was terrified, but he wanted to see what he had bought. He reached the farm, saw the house and called for the caretaker, but no one responded. He entered the house looking around, still afraid of encountering that enormous wolf. What he found was the caretaker, kneeling, washing his face in a stream that ran right beside the house. He ran to the caretaker, but for no apparent reason, the caretaker glared at him with anger and hatred. The man saw burn marks on his face and remembered the shot he had tried to take at the wolf where the spark had hit its snout. He ran away from there and returned to the city. He told what had happened, but everyone thought that for some reason he had spent money buying the farm and made up this story. Later, his wife ended up leaving him, but he never dared to return to that farm. Good night. In the early hours of November 12, 1976, at an airbase, soldiers Jose Maria and Juanca Isora were on guard duty in the fuel storage area. At 1.45 a.m., they distanced themselves from each other by about 60 meters and began hearing strange noises, like classic radio interference. Then that noise suddenly turned into something resembling a high-pitched whistle which lasted five minutes and was so intense 
that had hurt their ears. Hearing this sound very close to him, Jose Maria asked his companion to join him in a thorough inspection of the area, suspecting they might be facing sabotage. The high-pitched sound resumed. Both soldiers thought they were going mad, as the noise seemed like it would burst their eardrums. But after five minutes the sound stopped, and they saw a light in the sky that lasted about fifteen seconds. Another guard approached, along with the guard dog. Together, the three of them patrolled the area where the jet fuel was stored. The area was shrouded in total darkness and the officer thought it might be an invasion of the base. The dog remained calm, well trained, and gave the three soldiers a sense of security. So, they continued walking. When they reached a certain point they felt a sort of whirlwind. They loaded their machine guns and remained silent. Soon they heard the sound of eucalyptus branches breaking. Without hesitation they released the dog, which quickly ran towards the source of the cracking branches. After a few seconds the dog returned, seeming nauseous and unsteady, as if someone had terrified or struck it. Revived by the soldiers, the dog returned to the eucalyptus trees four or five times, but always came back the same way. Then, it started circling the soldiers, a defense technique taught to guard dogs. In other words, when danger or something unknown threatens the sentinels, trained dogs circle non-stop, protecting the people from potential danger. Alarmed, the soldiers prepared their weapons while the dog continued to circle faster and faster, growling menacingly. One of the guards, glancing to his left, spotted a greenish light. On impulse, he quickly turned. According to him, the light had a human shape, was very tall, approximately three meters, and seemed to be made up of small, luminous dots, with the edges being brighter. The head was small and appeared to be covered by some kind of helmet. The arms were long, the body wide, and the figure was on the ground. But the feet and legs were not visible. The arms were crossed, but the hands were not clearly discernible. Paralyzed by horror and surprise, the soldier couldn't fire his weapon, feeling a total stiffness in his body. He collapsed on the grass, and everything went dark. The other two soldiers opened fire on the strange figure, shooting between 40 and 50 times. At the moment of the gunfire, the figure became brighter, like a flash, and then disappeared. As the two soldiers helped their fallen comrade, they could hear the same sound they had heard minutes before the luminous being appeared, coming from the same direction. After 10 or 15 seconds, silence returned to the area. At dawn, about 50 men, under the command of an officer, swept the entire area where the incident occurred. And then, incredible details emerged. Not a single cartridge from the approximately 50 bullets that were fired was found. On the wall, where there should have been marks from the bullet impacts, there was no sign of gunfire. The Air Force confirmed that the machine guns had been fired. What had happened to those bullets fired at that entity? How was it possible that not a single bullet had struck the wall behind the figure considering the soldiers said they had fired at mid-height? After all, what had the guards confronted? What was that mysterious creature? Good night. It was an ordinary night, no full moon and far from any Friday the 13th superstitions. I was with a friend in the car, one of those nights when you decide to drive aimlessly just to clear your head. We were on a dirt road leading to a historic farm in the area, a place we had visited before. 
But that night it seemed especially isolated and quiet. We stopped the car and stayed there, chatting and listening to the sounds of nature around us. After a while I felt the need to stretch my legs. I got out of the car and stood there, enjoying the cool night breeze when, in the distance, something on the road caught my attention. At first I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. I saw a silhouette moving in the darkness coming toward me. It looked like a dog, but not like any dog I had ever seen before. It was large, very large, maybe the size of a calf, but its shape was strangely distorted. It could have been a cow, but it was too thin and walked in a crooked way, almost as if it were limping or as if it were something trying to imitate the shape of an animal. I was paralyzed for a moment, trying to understand what I was seeing, but the feeling that overtook me was pure instinct. I didn't stay to find out what that thing was. I ran back to the car, got in, and started the engine. With my hands trembling, I began to accelerate away, while the creature remained behind. My friend, seeing my state and me driving like that, was completely confused, not understanding what was happening. She tried to ask me what had happened, but I was focused on just one thing. Getting out of there as quickly as possible and safely, only when we got to her house, my heart still racing, did I manage to explain what I had seen. She listened in silence, not asking many questions. Such things are hard to process, and I knew that even if she didn't fully believe me, something on that road that night made us question what was really out there. Since then, I always think twice before going back down that road. Some things are better left as mysteries, and I prefer not to find out what that monster actually was. Good night. The clock read 8 p.m. It was March 2009. My horse was leading the way, and we were all silent. The only sounds were the animals breaking branches and the nocturnal birds making noises announcing our arrival. It was already Lent, and the moon was shining brightly in the sky. About 500 meters before we dismounted from our horses, we tied them to some trees and walked the rest of the way on foot. I felt like something was watching us, but I didn't know what it was. We were heading to an old hunter's cabin to drop off some animals we had captured. When we arrived at the cabin's door, we were hit by a strong smell of carrion. Before we could enter, Moises, one of our friends, let out a scream of terror. We all looked at him and saw that right beside him was an enormous black dog. The werewolf was ready to strike Moises. But at that moment, I cocked my shotgun and shot that thing. Jonas, another one of our friends, grabbed his dagger and plunged it right into the creature's chest. The thing howled in pain and looked at itself as if it were examining its wounds. It was a moment of pure adrenaline. That was our only chance. We all started running to get the horses. As we ran, we noticed the horses were in total agitation, neighing non-stop. But we managed to mount them and headed back to the farm. We were all alive and well. It was already 2 a.m. when we arrived at the farm and let the horses loose. They remained agitated all night, even now far away from the creature. We were brave hunters, but at that moment we all felt like small, frightened animals. From that night on, we stopped being hunters, and my journey, along with my friends, became solely about taking care of the animals on the farm. Good night. In the 1980s, I used to spend my school vacations on the farm where my godparents, Jose and Idenia, lived. It was an old mansion, but very cozy. I still miss it to this day. In the surrounding area, other families lived as well, including people who worked on my godparents' farm. 
Those were wonderful times, the freshness of dawn, good food, fruits straight from the trees. It was simply a wonderful place for me. Nowadays, it pains my heart to feel so much longing for that place and for them. One night we were in the kitchen talking around the wood stove. I remember my godmother asking me to go to bed because I had to wake up very early with my godfather, who had asked me to help him milk the cows. Even though I didn't like getting up early, I loved that kind of thing. Everyone in my family was born and raised on farms. Before I left the kitchen to go to my room and get ready for bed, we started hearing the farm dogs barking frantically. It was as if someone or something was approaching the house, catching the dog's attention. My godfather looked frightened and asked my godmother to take the children out of the kitchen and into the back room. As he said this, he grabbed the shotgun that hung high on the wall. I didn't know what was happening, but I was very scared to see all that tension. My godmother took my cousins and me by the hand and led us to the room. I tried to ask what was going on, but she just gestured for us to be quiet. While we listened, my godfather moved around, taking steps back and forth and opening some door, probably to go outside and see what it was. Suddenly we all heard a shot. We hiding there looked at each other. I asked my godmother who my uncle was shooting at. My godmother said that what was outside was a werewolf. After a few minutes, my uncle came back inside and locked the door. He went to the room to see if we were okay and started saying that he had hit the creature, but as expected, it didn't die. I couldn't believe it. It had to be a joke. My godparents asked my cousins and me to stay quiet because if we made noise, the thing might come back. We stayed silent for the rest of the night. That day, I didn't have the courage to go milk the cows with my uncle the next morning. They told us that a werewolf appeared on the farm from time to time, but it was rare. And when it did appear, it was usually to take one of their animals. This story is so surprising that even some people in our family didn't believe it when I told them. Even today, as an adult, when I tell this story, some still don't believe it. And it really is something hard to believe, especially because after that night, the creature never returned while I was on the farm. Today, that place is abandoned and my uncles have unfortunately passed away. Besides this story, the only thing left is a lot of longing for that time that stays in my mind. Good night. My name is Jose Freitas. I have a farm called Fell. I have always preferred country life to city life, but sometimes inexplicable and frightening events catch us by surprise. In the year 2003, I remember very well that I was at home waiting for a movie to start on Super Cine on Globo. Suddenly, before the movie began, I started to hear some distant howls. Fear soon took hold of me. I hadn't seen anything yet, but I could be sure. That sound was from a werewolf. My hope was that the howling wouldn't come closer to my farm. I kept watching TV. However, suddenly I began to hear a loud and powerful scream. It seemed to be about 500 meters away. I decided to lower the TV volume and stayed alert to what might happen around the house. The farm was isolated, with no other house nearby, which increased the feeling of vulnerability. Then I started to hear very heavy breathing at the back of the house. The breathing was similar to that of an angry bull. The sound seemed to circle the house and my heart raced. Suddenly I heard noises coming from the shed where I raised some rabbits. I didn't have the courage to go out and check. 
The next morning I went out to see if anything had happened and the scene was devastating. The door of the rabbit shed was broken and all the rabbits were torn apart. I found only a few pieces scattered around the yard. There was a lot of blood on the walls. Later that day, I found the head of one of the rabbits in the stream about 30 meters from the house. That creature, whatever it was, killed and destroyed all the rabbits. It was a terrifying event that has marked me to this day. When I remember that night, I feel a chill run down my spine. Today I'm an old man and still believe that country life is the best of all, but it also hides mysteries and dangers that we can never predict. Good night. My name is Vinicius, I am 37 years old, and I am going to tell a story from when I was 21. I grew up in a very small town in the countryside. One night I got together with some friends and we walked to a neighboring village which was about a 30 minute walk from my town. We went there to have some beers at a little bar and see if we could meet any girls. We stayed there until around midnight when the little bar was closing and we decided to head back. One of our friends ended up staying with a girl and said he would return later on his own. The rest of the group walked back home. A few hours later, around three in the morning, I woke up to cries for help. My house at that time was on the dirt road that led to the village where we had been earlier. Other people who also lived around there came out to the street to see what was happening, including me. Surprisingly, we found my friend who had stayed behind with the girl. He was running and screaming desperately, but we couldn't see anything that could justify his panic. When he got close to us, he started to explain. According to him, after he had dropped the girl off at her house and was walking back alone on the road, he passed by a house where everything was dark. In front of this house there was a black pig. When he was about ten meters ahead of the pig it started to squeal. He heard the sound of something tearing the pig apart. When he focused his vision, he saw a big black thing, about three times the size of the pig, mutilating the poor animal. That's when he started running, thinking he would be the creature's next victim after the pig. All of us who lived on that street stood looking at the road for quite a while, as far as our eyes could see but no creature appeared. Tired, we went back to our houses, and my friend went to his home. The next day, news began to spread that the pig from that house had indeed been attacked and was in such a terrible state that no one could identify what kind of animal could have done that. I am still friends with this guy, and to this day he swears that despite not being able to see much, he is sure it was a werewolf. Good night. I am a retired man, and for my leisure I decided that twice a month I would take my car and go on aimless trips. These trips gave me an indescribable pleasure, a feeling of freedom and discovery that I had never experienced before. Each new destination, each unknown road was a new adventure waiting for me with open arms. On one of these trips I found a small town that seemed frozen in time. 
The charm of the cobblestone streets, the houses with their colonial facades, and the tranquility in the air made me want to stay a bit longer. It was in one of the bars in this town that I met a group of men who became my friends. They were farmers, and seeing me alone at the bar, they struck up a conversation. Between sips of beer and laughter, they told me about their lives on the farm, their adventures and challenges. They seemed to be simple men, but with many stories to tell. When they learned that I traveled for pleasure and without a fixed destination, they found it curious and invited me to join a hunt that night. The idea excited me. I had never participated in a hunt before, and the prospect of spending time with my new friends seemed perfect. I accepted the invitation immediately. We all went to one of their farms to prepare. The atmosphere was one of excitement. We gathered our equipment and headed towards a dam. I found it curious when I saw they were building a platform in the middle of the water, but I didn't question it. I was there to enjoy the experience and learn from them. We got into a boat and sailed to the platform, which was about 30 meters away. When we arrived, one of the farmers turned on bright lights that illuminated the entire area around us. It was then that they told me our hunt would be special. We were going to hunt a werewolf. At first I thought it was a joke, but seeing the seriousness on their faces I realized they were not joking. They explained that the platform was a safe place because they believed the werewolf couldn't swim. We were all silent, alert to the slightest noise. The full moon shone brightly, reflecting on the surface of the dam. The wait seemed endless until suddenly we heard a howl in the distance. The sound grew closer, and our hearts raced. And then it appeared. A huge creature with dark fur and glowing eyes was prowling the edge of the dam. The thing watched us growling, trying to find a way to reach us. I could hardly believe what I was seeing. The legend of the werewolf was right there before our eyes. The farmers started shooting, but the bullets had no effect. The creature continued to prowl without being able to reach us. Time passed slowly. Each minute felt like an eternity. Finally, after many shots and numerous attempts to reach us, the werewolf gave up and went away. The tension began to dissipate, and my friends sighed in relief. We returned to the shore in silence, each lost in their thoughts. For me, that experience was more than just a simple adventure. The next morning, I said goodbye to my new friends and continued my journey. The road called to me again. However, things I used to do before, I no longer do. For example, stopping my car somewhere deserted to spend the night alone. What used to be a fear of thieves has now turned into a fear of something much worse that could tear me apart without me even knowing why. Good night. My name is Sergio and I would like to recount something I would prefer to forget, but I feel I must share it to warn others about the hidden dangers that can lurk in seemingly harmless places. It all started when my friend Lucas invited me to spend a weekend at a farm rented by some of his acquaintances. I thought it would be a good opportunity to relax and escape the routine of the big city. We arrived at the farm on Friday afternoon, with the sun still shining on the horizon. We greeted the people there. They seemed friendly and showed us around, making us feel welcome to explore. The farm was beautiful and exuded rustic charm. That night, after a pleasant outdoor dinner, 
We gathered around a campfire to tell stories and enjoy the tranquility of the place. However, the atmosphere changed drastically when we noticed strange movements around the house. Shadowy figures seemed to dance in the darkness, and the air felt heavy. Lucas and I exchanged worried glances but tried to stay calm, attributing the strange phenomena to our imagination, or perhaps the effect of alcohol. However, when the sounds of chants and murmurs began to echo across the fields, our rationality crumbled. We decided to investigate discreetly, not wanting to alarm the others on the farm. As we approached the source of the sounds, our fear grew. We found a group of people wearing dark robes gathered around a smaller fire, performing dark rituals and invoking entities that should not be disturbed. The shock and horror paralyzed us when we saw some sort of body around the fire. We didn't know if it was real, but the terror intensified when we saw something hovering in the air, a shadowy, distorted figure that seemed to feed off the energy of the ritual. Lucas and I exchanged a panicked look, knowing we needed to get out of there immediately. We tried to leave silently, but we were discovered by one of the ritual practitioners. He stared at us with crazed eyes and shouted for the others to stop us from leaving. Now driven by the instinct for survival, we ran back to the main house. Our footsteps echoed through the silence of the night. The other members of the group started chasing us, their voices chanting sinisterly as they tried to stop us. We reached the car, gasping for breath, our hands trembling as we tried to fit the key into the ignition. The others were closing in quickly, their faces taking on demonic forms in the madness of the moment. With one final effort, we managed to start the car and speed away from the farm. As we fled down the dark road, the visions of the ritual and the supernatural figures hovering in the air still haunted our minds. We only stopped when we reached the nearest town, where we reported the incident to the local authorities. We never found out exactly who those people were, or what they were trying to summon. From that day on, we avoided adventures that could lead us to unknown places like that. Good night. My name is Lucas. I grew up on a farm in the countryside where my father was always the bravest man I knew. He always protected us from any threat that approached our family. One night, I was heading home with my girlfriend. We were coming back from a party. It must have been around four in the morning. We were both exhausted and my parents didn't know that my girlfriend was coming home with me that night. The way back was long, and the dark, winding roads didn't help at all. When we finally reached the farm, I sensed something was wrong. All the lights were on. Normally, when we went to sleep, my father left only one light in front of the house on. When I finally unlocked the door, we spotted my father. He was in the hallway holding a flashlight that dazzled our eyes. He was a guardian of the night darkness, and before we could get closer, he raised his shotgun towards us, yelling for us to stay away. My girlfriend and I were shocked and started shouting. 
What's going on, Dad? Finally, he realized it was me and lowered the shotgun. Is that you, son? He asked, the flashlight shaking in his hand, but his eyes remained alert, as if expecting any suspicious movement. That's when he rushed to the door and locked it with a speed I had never seen before. Dad, what's happening? I asked. He looked at us, his tired eyes revealing a mix of relief and concern, and began to explain. I'm sorry, but about two hours ago our farm was attacked by a werewolf, he said. Those words echoed in our minds. That's when my mother finally arrived in the room with her rosary in hand and started hugging me for being home safely. My father explained that he shot at the creature, but it didn't die and fled into the woods. My girlfriend and I were heading to the farm to sleep, but after all that commotion, we couldn't sleep. The night dragged on slowly, waiting for the possible return of the werewolf. My father remained vigilant with the shotgun, always within reach. Every sound outside made us tremble. My girlfriend and I huddled in a corner of the room, our minds swirling with thoughts. It was a long and distressing night, as my girlfriend and I thought that that night, my father out of desperation could have accidentally killed us. But thank God that didn't happen. Good night. My name is Paolo. I'm 47 years old, but I'll tell you a story from when I was just 16 and lived with my parents on their farm. Nowadays, my parents are retired and live a quiet life, but back then, they were farmers and cattle breeders dedicated to farm life. It was a peaceful routine with days filled with planting, harvesting, and taking care of the animals. However, on a stormy night, everything changed. We were gathered in the living room while a furious rain fell outside, making noise against the windows. But that wouldn't be the only sound we'd hear that night. Despite the sound of heavy rain, we could hear a kind of howling approaching. My father jumped off the couch and went to the window trying to see something. It didn't take long. I still remember the look of terror on his face as he shouted, A werewolf! His voice full of panic. We all approached the window and saw that grotesque thing. I was only 16, and fear froze my blood when I realized the seriousness of the situation. My mother rushed to get a rosary while my father turned off the TV and lights, saying we had to stay silent. The problem was that one of the living room windows was a large glass that left us vulnerable to anything trying to enter the house. As we gathered in the center of the room, with my mother praying a rosary, we heard the sound of claws scraping right at the front door. The werewolf didn't even try to break down the door, as it easily noticed it could pass through the window with just a simple blow. It broke the glass, 
That would be our end. Chaos ensued as we tried to think of a way to defend ourselves. We were cornered. That's when my father grabbed some work machetes hanging on the wall. Now we were all armed, with our hearts pounding as we prepared for the confrontation. The creature advanced more and more. It was either us or him. We all showed a skill we never imagined we had and started striking blows with machetes against that thing. Every blow we struck made the creature let out horrifying roars. We were determined to survive. A few seconds later, seeing that he couldn't handle us, the werewolf fled through the same place he came in, so fast that he ended up breaking the rest of the window he had entered through. We were relieved. The creature vanished into the darkness. Now we only heard the sounds of rain again, while part of it wetted our living room through the huge broken window. The next day, my mother entered a very serious trauma, said she would never live on that farm again. But a few days later, she calmed down, and my parents still live there to this day. Fortunately, we all came out alive and the creature never returned. Good night. Hello, my name is Eleno, and what I'm about to recount here was a dreadful thing that happened in the year 1982. It was a dark and rainy night when a very strange dog appeared barking on my farm. At that time, it had been about 10 years since I got married and had three children aged between five and eight. The dog seemed to be seeking shelter and my children begged us to let him in. It was a dog unlike any I had ever seen before. Out of pity for the animal and wanting to fulfill my children's wishes, I decided to help. We opened the door and welcomed the dog inside while my children dried the animal, which was drenched with a towel. At first, he seemed grateful and quickly nestled near the stove. At that moment, I felt I had done the right thing. That poor animal could spend the night with us. However, as the night progressed, the dog's behavior became increasingly strange. He began to growl softly at us and his eyes gleamed with a threatening light. At one point, he filled me with terror looking at me with a menacing expression. Suddenly we realized something was wrong. The dog began to wriggle and emit strange sounds while its form began to change before us. Its dark fur gave way to thicker fur, its limbs elongated, and its features became more savage. Frightened and perplexed, we began to flee from where he was while the dog finished its transformation in a matter of minutes. There was no longer a dog in the kitchen. It was an imposing beast looking at us with hungry, wild eyes. Horror seized us as we tried to understand what was happening. It started as an act of compassion and turned into a terrible nightmare. The dog, now a werewolf, began to advance towards us and I knew I needed to act quickly to protect my family. 
In an act of desperation, I ordered my wife and children to all run to my room, where my shotgun was also kept. I grabbed the shotgun as I asked my wife to lock them inside. Only I would face that beast. But by the time I returned to confront the creature, it had vanished and all I could hear were eerie howls in the middle of the forest. Since that night, we have never seen that strange dog or werewolf again. Today, I am an old man with grandchildren, and we tell this story to all of them. But to this day, I do not know what it meant. How could a dog transform into a werewolf? And why did it leave without harming my family? Was it because it was truly grateful for us sheltering it when it was still a dog? That I suppose I will never know. Good night.